Hey guys, welcome back to another tutorial from ADSR and FM8Tutorials.com. If you're not subscribed to our YouTube channel, do that at youtube.com forward slash ADSR totes. So today I wanted to dive into the mysteriously confusing world of the FM8 ratios, but I wanted to do it in a way that should make sense to most musicians and producers. Um, if you read in and kind of dive into the literature of FM synthesis, you'll see that the word ratio gets thrown around a lot. And for people who might be coming from like a subtractive additive synthesis type world, like a silent or massive, the list could go on. It's a little confusing to try to bridge that gap. It's almost like you have to relearn the synthesizer language again in a brand new one. So what I wanted to kind of do was to show you how you can kind of wrap your heads around the um, ratios in the operators in FM8 without having to think too much about ratios and how to kind and how that kind of parallels other synths that use different synthesis engines like massive so you'll see that i have a uh <coughs> excuse me you'll see that i have uh, fm8 pulled up right here and i have a sawtooth wave torn waveform pulled up in the uh f operator because it's already set to the default one but uh I, I'm using Sawtooth just for this tutorial because I can I can kind of hear the differences better than with like a sine wave or a triangle. And then I have a massive patch pulled up that is uh, same waveform, just the square, saw one, and I have it turned all the way to saw. And then I have a piano, so we can kind of show the concert pitch. And I have this tuner right here that is on my FM8 track, and so if I play a note on FM8, it will... Uh, I'm playing C, which you can see right here, and you can, you can see right there, and I'm playing, and it's registering as a C. So let's kind of dive in. So you'll see if it's everything's at zero for F. Don't even care about A, B, C, D, E, and E. They're not turned on, but you don't get really a sound. You just kind of get a grumble. So the first sound, the first ratio or number that you'll actually hear pitch that's in concert tuning would be 0.5. So if you just type in 0 0.5, and now I hit a C, it's coming up as a C. I'm hitting a C. You you, you do 0.3, right? I'm going to hit that same C, but now I'm actually playing a D sharp that's actually 16 cents sharp, and I'm playing a C. So the first, for all intents and purposes, the first ratio or number, not so much a ratio, we'll just call it a number for this tutorial, um, that makes a sound that you can use in most genres, which is things in concert pitch, um, you know, pentatonic scale, things like that. The Western scale would be 0.5. And that's a pretty low one. Um, that's kind of as low as you can get it. So it'd be great for bass sounds and stuff and still be able to audibly hear it. So you would think, um, okay, 0.5, and I want to go up an octave. So right now, I'm hitting this C. Now, what if I want to use the the numbers in the operator to play this C? Well, then all you do is you would just type in one, and then so watch. I'll I'll go down to 0.5, and then I'll go back. So I just played this C right here, and now I'm gonna play this C and bring the ratio to 1, and they'll be the same thing. See that? So now you'll think, OK, let's say you wanted to play this C note way up there, but you wanted to push that key. Well, then we just went 0.5 to 1. That brought it up an octave, so 1.5. Let's try that. Now I'm playing G. I'm playing this G right here if I'm if I bring it back down just to 0.5. See that? So it brought it up an octave and then five steps. Five uh, whole steps, or you can think of it in semitones. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So it brought it up one octave and seven semitones. Or half tones. Half steps. So Okay, that's just weird. Um, then that starts to get into the whole ratio world. But I'm trying to stay away from that from this tutorial so you can kind of see how this corresponds to other synths. So 
if I wanted to play two octaves above this C, or if I wanted to tune this, let's say I was going to layer this with another operator, and I wanted I wanted to have one, so we're going to activate um, the E, our E operator, right? I'm going to make it a sawtooth. So right now with F at one, that's playing the higher notes. Let me turn that one down, and then I'll put turn. Here's E. So see how that's playing the low one, and that's bringing in the high one. Our E is at 0.5, and our F is at one. Those are an octave apart. Um, so I'll turn these down a little bit, equally around 80 or something. It doesn't really matter. So uh, going back to just one operator for now, um, F. If we turn this up to two, so let's, let, I'll run through this one more time. So 0 0.5, 0 0.5 is the first, the first number that you'll actually get an audible, usable sound that's in the Western scale that you, you know and use. So if I play, if I play this C down here, and then I want to tune this C to this C, you'll make that number one. Now, if you want to play two octaves above that C, 1.5 will not do it. The number you'll have to go to is all the way up to 2. See how it's a C again? If I do 1.5, it'll play a G note. And without getting into the ratios, see how it's G on my tuner? Um, without getting into the ratios too much, just, just think, okay... Uh, every one and a half, it's not going to go up a full octave. It's going to go up one octave and then basically a fifth above whatever note you're playing. So G is a fifth above C. Um, and that's more the musical way to think of it. And I came from learning a synth like Massive before I ever touched FM8. So right now I have, I'm playing Massive, and I have a square saw wave, right? And so in this, if I wanted to have you know, this one's at negative 12. Zero is an octave above it. So now I have two sounds. So there's the higher pitched one, blended with the low one. In FM8, to have something that's two octaves apart, instead of thinking of it as, you know, 12 semitones, you're going to start thinking of it as 0.5 would be the low note, this negative 12, and one would be going up a whole octave. Now you want to go up two octaves from from your from here. You would go in massive up to positive 12. There's two octaves between those two. And I'll play them. In FM8, what you're going to want to do is you're going to have to go up not just to 1.5 even though 0.5 to 0.1 was an octave change. You're going to have to go up to 2. note and then a note above it that is um so I'm playing C now I was playing B a second ago but now you have a two octave span um so one last thing I'm going to do let's say you wanted to create in massive real simple you wanted to create a uh, kind of like a fifth sound you'd have zero and then you'd have 0.5 right and then you have this sound kind of starting to get a chord sound. Well, in FM8, to get that same sound, let's say you start out with a low note at, you know, um, for your, your E operator, I'll turn F down. You have a uh, 0.5, right? And now you want that fifth above it, or a fifth, an octave, and you know, above it. You're going to use a different ratio. You're, you're not just going to, it's a little less straightforward, obviously, than massive. So what you can do, if you go to 1 and then 1.5, there's your chord sound. Um, so I will get more into it a little bit in the next tutorial. I'm actually going to do a few parts on this. Um, next tutorial, I'm going to kind of go into, uh, it, it's, it's kind of strange, but um, for people who are very musical and not mathematical brains like myself, um, I will go into what notes, as you finally tune these, actually play in concert pitch, and then what ones don't, 
and then what what tunings you need to actually tune them and kind of how to blend those sounds together and we'll keep going up the up the pitch spectrum up the pitch scale so it makes a little bit more sense but i hope you guys like this tutorial um, I hope it makes a little bit sense of sense coming from a musical background instead of a mathematical background. If you have any questions or comments, let me know. Next, see you next time, guys.